Welcome to day five of Natural Beauty Summit's Detox Your Beauty Regimen series. I'm Salome Salehi, founder and president at Sugar Sugar Wax, a clean beauty company. And today I have the great pleasure of introducing you to Amy and Christina, co-authors of Plant Powered Beauty. Although this was their first book together, Amy and Christina have been working on a second edition of this book to include a section about CBD, which has been taking the beauty industry by storm. Now, let's pause and think about that for a second. CBD, a plant derivative, an effective plant derivative, has been taking the beauty industry by storm? What does that say about the other 46 ingredients that are in your skincare? Christina, through her work with Orchard Strategies, has been helping the beauty industry be better and do better, while Amy has been teaching and sharing her wisdom about plant-based ingredients endlessly. Now, in order for us to really appreciate the impact of toxins on our health and beauty, sometimes it helps to just take a little break from the bad stuff and rely on the simple things like plants. This book is incredibly informative and solution oriented. You can literally mix up a batch of whatever your skin might need with a few pantry staples. Stay tuned to learn more about the power of plants. Hi everyone, welcome back to Natural Beauty Summit. I am here with Amy Gelfer and Christina Denion, and they are co-authors of an amazing book called Plant Powered Beauty. We're gonna talk about that book, and I'm just going to, I wanna start with the book. Um, now, it's it was published a couple of years ago now? Yeah, March 2018. Yeah. Um, so just around two years, and we are also going to talk about the V2 of it, which is coming out, but we're going to get to their baby steps. So I want to talk a little bit about the journey of how you guys came to write this book together, because mm -hmm. you both have um, a background with essential oils, and that is a really, really great place to start with. Um, understanding the power of plants and botanicals, but the education piece in the book and then followed by the recipe piece, it's, it goes way, way, way beyond that. So I want to understand, like, what made you write this? Well... <laughs> You can start. I mean, Christina actually, you know, had the I genesis of the idea, really. I have to give it to her. And, um, you know, she uh, saw that there wasn't really, I mean, there are a lot of books about natural beauty, but she felt like something like this niche, like needed to be said. And, mm -hmm. and so um, it was really her drive i would say that got it going and made it happen so i'm really grateful to her um and i think that you know i've been working with plant-based ingredients for skin and body care and wellness for now over 20 years so this is something that i've been doing for a really long time and certainly my my uh I don't know, my journey with it started out really as a practitioner, like actually working one-on-one -on -one with people and customizing um, remedies for them and th that kind of thing, more in line with kind of mind-body wellness practices. That morphed into a product brand that I had for about, I would say, almost ten, seven, eight years or so, maybe a little longer, nine years. And then that morphed into consulting and teaching. So this, the book, when Christina came to me with this great idea, it was almost like this natural expression of that, you know? So 
Yeah, and I should mention that um, I met Amy because I was a student at her school. Um, and ever after working um, in the public relations world, representing health and wellness brands and practitioners, I really saw this movement of um, where we were being much more mindful about the foods we were eating and how that impacts our health. Um, but I think that we were kind of on the cusp of a much bigger awakening about the ingredients we put on our skin and how that impacts our health. So um, it's, it was really wonderful working with Amy on this book because as someone who was my teacher, essentially, um, we were able to also come to it from two different perspectives as well, uh, or I should say backgrounds, um, to shape the book to be something that would be a resource for individuals, whether they were beginners and just learning about or just curious about natural ingredients and clean beauty, but also people that are much more advanced and they just want to have, you know, this guide um, so that they can, you know, check back about certain ingredients or if they if they're looking for a particular recipe. So um, yeah, so that's a little bit of background about what brought us to write this book. Yeah, and it's interesting that you should touch on that because. Uh, for those of you who haven't read the book, it is fairly um, easy to follow. Like if, for example, in the herb section, you only refer to nine, nine herbs. Um, but it is also extremely complex. So you can learn a lot. Like it's not, it's not, you know, there's some natural beauty books that are like, very like common sense back to basics they're great reminders but like you said i think your book is just a really good reference now in terms of some of the feedback that you guys have gotten from readers or from the plant powered uh community what are some of the skin conditions or health conditions or body conditions that people have been able to address with the recipes and with the help of your book? Sure, I'll take a stab at that um, uh, first, and I'm sure Amy will have a lot to add. Um, but we hear so many different, um, we hear so much feedback from readers, which is really, really wonderful. And it runs the spectrum of different, um, different skin conditions from dry skin um, to um, age repair, for lack of a better word, um, clogged pores, we have, you know, exfoliation recipes, um, and going back to the dry skin, we have, um, we have creams, we have serums, and um, also I think really importantly right now is stress. Folks are really stressed because of what's going on, and to be able to turn to essential oils, whether that's for an inhaler or any other recipe, to understand the relationship between essential oils, uh, certain essential oils that can help us reduce stress and become centered, and just to kind of enhance our well-being during this time. Um, I've heard a lot of feedback about that, and that's that's really so wonderful. And Amy, I'm sure you've, you've heard lots of lo other uh, comments, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what's unique, too, about the book, where people, I think, really gravitate towards is that is this section on essential oils that we focus on and this idea of these synergies that can be kind of interchanged through different products, right? And many of them have a lot to do with stress relief, but also stress that even happens to our skin. Mm -hmm. So regardless of, you know, emotional stuff that we're all dealing with right now, but I think also that impact on our skin and relieving that on our skin, um, I think, has been really unique about the book. Mm -hmm. um, we have this section, not only with the essential oils, but where we put together like three different essential oils and we call them synergies and we talk about like why it's good for these things, et cetera, and what the therapeutic properties are, but also the aroma. And I think, I think people can start to have a lot of fun with that as far as how they want to use it in different ways. Yeah. So that also brings me back to the idea that blending is both an art and a science. And I think that we provide such detailed information about the ingredients. So you re and also there's a section about how the skin works. Um, so you really have a comprehensive understanding. But when Amy was talking about the synergies, the beauty is you can interchange those synergies based on what you want to accomplish therapeutically, but also emotionally with the different um, 
ingredients, the essential oils and the synergies. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, there's so much to unpack right in there. <laughs> there's so many things I want to talk about. Um, especially right now we're sheltered in place and the self care at home care is becoming so much more important. I think than it has ever been because, you know, we don't have the spas and the salons to go to and we're sort of, you know, left to our own devices to take care of ourselves, which is a bit of a shift of paradigm. But, um, and the uh, stress thing was something that I wasn't even thinking about. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious, before we talk about the, you know, at home care regimen, I want to know, was there any results or anything that like surprised you that you weren't really expecting to hear back from um, readers that you're like, oh, like I didn't realize that this could be helpful for that. Is there anything like that? Um, on the note of COVID and the fact that folks are home now, um, I've actually heard feedback from book clubs that have said, hey, wait a second, this is, this is a book that's also interactive where we can make something and we can compare notes. And a book club just contacted me about doing a Zoom after they all purchased the book and they all just started <laughs> blending um, just to ask some questions. So that's something that's come out of this particular situation that, um, that's really nice. That is so cool. Yeah. And did you want to say anything about that? Anything that caught you by surprise? Um, yeah, I think people, one thing in light of this situation too, and things that I don't think people realized or they made the connection. I heard a lot that, wow, I can use oat flour in my cabinet for that, you know, mm -hmm. or I can use, you know, a turmeric that I have in my cabinet for that. And I don't think that people were making the connection with the food and to the beauty necessarily. And I think that especially now in light of what we're, at, what we're all experiencing, like being able to make it super easy and super accessible that you don't have to get such fancy ingredients or, or worry about, you know, complicated proportions. And I think it can be as simple as scooping out a tablespoon of oat flour, putting it in the palm of your hand, sprinkling a little turmeric in it, and boom, you have a face scrub kind of thing. And that making it very accessible. And I think that's the kind of feedback I've been getting, and certainly now, especially. Oh, I'm sure. Sorry. On that on that note, also, I think um, I've heard some feedback about how um, refreshing it is to find out how affordable it is to make your yeah. own beauty product. Absolutely. Because I think there's this misunderstanding that clean beauty is so much more expensive. It's like buying organic products at a supermarket. But the right. truth is, if you're empowered with the information and you blend yourself, it's not only incredibly satisfying to understand what ingredients are going on your skin, and some of that actually makes its way into your body, um, but to also realize that you can do this in an affordable way, and um, and that's people are especially mindful of that now. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with everyone being sheltered in place, if someone wanted to kind of start to delve into this like DIY at home, is there like a particular, or actually maybe, let me rephrase that. Um, as people are kind of rethinking their beauty regimen, what are some of the things that you would recommend that they take into consideration? Or um, like, is there a recipe that they should be starting with? Like, how do you, how do you go down this path? Um, I'll, I'll answer. I, I've been finding that the whole shelter in place thing is having an impact a lot on, on especially those of us who are urban dwellers, okay? Mm -hmm. Our impact on being outside. It's much more difficult. It's a little more com complicated. How to go outside, when to go outside, to be outside. Um, and so I think people as far, the reason why I'm getting at this with skincare and the face, I think people are looking for vibrancy. We're at home, we're feeling dull, we're feeling we're not dressing up, you know, going to work, seeing people, there's this dull kind of 
uh, not a lot of circulation or vibrancy going on. We're not outside as much. So I think starting with a simple scrub is the best thing to start any regimen to me. And that's what I've even been recommending to even friends and family. And I, you know, and other people who ask me, and it's a really simple thing. You literally can go in your, in your cabinet, you have oatmeal, you grind it up into a powder, you add a few herbs or spices or tea or whatever you have in it. And voila, you have a face scrub. Mm -hmm. And I think that these things are really important, you know, um, to just give our sense of, of, give our skin a refresh, a detoxing. I mean, a lot of us are, are sitting still or in front of screens, you know, to kind of add that vibrancy and energy, I think is important. So I would say like, as far as like a skincare protocol, I would definitely start with an exfoliant for face and also for body. And then that would be like my go-to. That's awesome. Did you want to add to that, Christina? Actually, I think it's a fabulous idea. Um, <laughs> so I would echo what Amy is saying, but I would also say if you're just starting out um, and you have our book, um, to read the section about how the skin works, because I think just having that basic understanding before you start blending um, is, is really empowering. So I would start, it's only a few pages, read that, and then just dive in. And remember, it's... Um, like I was saying before, it's an art and it's a science. So learn about the ingredients. Don't be overwhelmed by the charts. You know, if, if there's a particular, if you have two or three essential oils at home, our charts will allow you to learn a lot more about them. And then you figure out what recipes you can make with them if that's how you're starting. Um, but I really love Amy's idea about um, realizing that the things that you already have, that you don't even need to go out and order, um, you can be making, like she gave the example of a face scrub. And right now when we're, we've been kind of locked in place, if that's a, it's a great thing to do. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I love how accessible the re recipes are. And a lot of the feedback that I've been getting is that people are really just asking the questions like we're having this moment of reflection and in some cases that's translating into well what am i putting on my skin why do i feel the way i do well like you know i'm noticing like i'm dull or i feel like whatever it is but people are getting curious to your point to learn more about like their skin and health and i guess the whole picture really mm -hmm. Um, I want to talk. I want to talk about this new book that's coming out, and uh, just so our audience understands, can you talk about whether this is an updated version or if it's just specifically focused on CBD, like as a sequel? Tell tell us what to expect, and it's coming out in the fall, right? Yes, it's coming out in August. Oh, um, okay. soon, very soon. Yeah. And it's, it's an updated version of our book. It's a new edition that includes a, a significant new section on CBD. Um, it both demystifies what CBD is, um, because I think there's a lot of confusion out there about CBD. And then there's also a handful of fantastic recipes. Um, and importantly, information about where you can source your CBD. Um, so that, that's just, um, kind of some, some basic info, an overview of the right. new section. Um, but Amy can probably chime in here, um, oh, about the CBD. So, um, yeah, so the book is really just a few updates, but mostly we're have this kind of bonus chapter, you know, that the new edition then is going to have this fabulous extra bonus in it. Um, and, uh, and like I, you know, as Christina said, you know, CBD is really an interesting ingredient. It is a plant ingredient. It stands for cannabidiol, which is a phytocannabinoid, which is one of the phytochemicals that all plants produce. Just like an essential oil is a, is a chemical compound that's found in a plant. And when you take echinacea or, you know, use arnica or whatever kind of herbal medicine that you're using, you're actually using these phytochemicals for wellness and healing. And many of these phytochemicals, in all honesty, really were the basis of what pharmaceuticals started to 
start their studies with, right? A lot of medicine all originated coming from plants. So CBD is this um, one particular chemical compound that is found in the cannabis plant. And what is, there's, and one thing I will say is that there's still a lot of research that is not done yet. A lot of this is inconclusive, especially what if we want to understand what the results are. Completely anecdotal at this point. Yeah. Um, things are still coming in. People are still researching its real effects. So this is really at the real new part of what it can do. Now, what's fascinating is people have been studying about cannabidiol and studying about this amazing molecule, right, and chemical compounds of the phytocannabinoids in cannabis. They're also started to discover that our, the human body has a synergistic, nervous, synergistic system, cellular system, that happens to link up almost like a lock and key mechanism with these phytocannabinoids. So we have within our bodies what's called an endocannabinoid system. And so when we apply or ingest, right, these phytocannabinoids, it connects and it affects us. And so what the chapter is really about is how this system, this endocannabinoid system that exists in our skin is making contact with the CBD when we apply it to our skin and certain results, or at least we hope, certain effects will take place. And so that's kind of gives you a little bit of an outline. And mostly what these phytocannabinoids and CBD is really known for is wound healing and anti-inflammatory pain relieving. So when we're looking at those main therapeutic activities, you know, and what that means for skincare, it means a lot, right? I mean, for skin that's no longer youthful, we're dealing with puffiness and even, uneven, you know, uneven skin tone. We're looking at wrinkles that need kind of more cellular regeneration. And so CBD is a beautiful ingredient to kind of add to these other plant ingredients that have those strong therapeutic properties to help boost that intention of the product. Okay. So I think that that's kind of what we were going for when we were looking at the recipes and looking at the chapter to try to just really kind of make it really simple about what it can do. And also I think is important is to not say that you know CBD is this cure-all for everything, but that it really works most powerfully when in synergy with other plant ingredients. And I think that's something that we wanted to emphasize as well. That's really interesting because there is so much happening in the beauty space with CBD products and skincare mm -hmm. and all of these things. And I, I haven't tried all of them or really any of them, but um, my experience with CBD was mus muscular, musculoskeletal, mm -hmm. where I would like, I get neck pain and I mm -hmm. have to take medication or it turns into a migraine and it's so mm -hmm. severe and it's regular. It's like part of my life mm -hmm. until my husband was like, I have this like CBD oil, let's try it on your neck. Mm -hmm. And the results were unbelievable. Like to your point, completely anecdotal at this stage. But I was like, what is in this that it like just took away all that tenseness and the pain and the headache went away just from like rubbing a little bit on a, around my neck mm -hmm. and shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I'm really like interested and curious about that section of your book, but also interested to see like how do those properties translate in beauty like when you read about cbd everyone talks about oh it's anti-inflammatory or oh, it's anti-inflammatory it's anti-aging because it's anti-inflammatory sure but i feel like that's really kind of one dimensional for this like multifaceted plant mm -hmm. so can you like like what do you foresee um CBD playing a role in beauty, like lines, more than just uh, doing yourself, but what, what is CBD going to do to the industry at large um, 
for products? Well, I do think it's a very, very powerful ingredient that will have a big impact um, on beauty because as you felt that immediate result, um, and as I said, that we have this endocannabinoid system that connects, and really the whole purpose of this endocannabinoid system is really about finding balance in our body. And often with any skin condition that we have, whether it be an acne breakout or eczema or uh, an injury or, um, or a hormonal breakout or whatever it might be, it's because our sense of homeostasis, our sense of balance has been disrupted. And that our bodies are always trying to get back into that state of balance. We may never get to that perfect place, but we're always trying to get there. And the endocannabinoid system is directing us, trying to inch us, you know, push us back into that place of balance. So when we're thinking about our skincare and we want that perfect skin, which is in balance, right? Even skin tone, not so many lines and wrinkles, not so dry, not this, not that, right? Um, we're looking for that sense of balance. And I think that's where CBD can come into a really a powerful position in beauty. Um, but I think it's also important that it works with other botanical ingredients. So if someone is having, you know, really bad acne breakouts, but that CBD is then blended with other ingredients that are really great for balancing the skin in that way. Do you know what I'm saying? Or um, for uh, evening skin tone or for puffiness. You know, it needs to be, let's say, paired with, you know, chamomile or geranium oils or, or um, you know, jojoba oils or other plant ingredients to kind of help emphasize that. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that um, and see how it affects the skin in that way. Awesome. That is a great note. And, and Christina, is there anything... Any last thoughts, any last tips you want to share with our audience before we let you ladies go? Sure. I think that um, going back to some of the things we touched on earlier, um, I think that this, what our book represents um, is being more mindful in your lifestyle as it pertains to your skincare. And this moment is a, is a really wonderful moment to be incredibly mindful. And some of us have had the time to pause. And so, um, so yeah, we hope that our book um, will kind of empower and inspire others uh, during this time and well into the future um, to just take their own um, wellness and health and skincare into their own hands. Awesome. Well said. I agree. Well said indeed. Thank you ladies <laughs> so much. It's been such a pleasure. We will include links for these ladies. And um, is there a list that people can subscribe to to get announcements about the upcoming book? Um, I, I have an email list. I can send you that link. So okay. for sure, yeah. have, so like, we'll a list. you must have a book list too, right, Christina? Where oh, you yes. have an email list? Yeah. I have a book list as well. I just thought you yeah. meant like um, a URL. Um, and uh, so we both have email lists and we can certainly send that to you to include. Yeah, I would, that would be great. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited about where your book is going to land in, in August. I'm so looking forward to like reading it. And um, yeah, I'm also just excited to see what CBD how that plays out in the beauty world because i feel like it's such a powerful ingredient okay guys thank you look out for the links and you can find these guys on oh, I, yeah i have one thing i'm sorry to interrupt but you have an instagram that you put together for the book christina the instagram for the book right so what why don't you say what it is the instagram handle for the yeah. book Okay, so a Botanical Beauty Kitchen is the Instagram handle for the book and also for recipes, um, new recipes that are not even in the book. So and <laughs> ingredient wisdom. So Botanical yeah. Beauty Kitchen is the handle, yes. That's awesome. We'll include that link and we'll direct you guys so that if you want more and to be inspired and get some recipes, there you have it. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for joining us and for your time and sharing your wisdom and expertise. We appreciate it.
Well, and thank you for organizing this summit virtually. I know it was originally supposed to be in person, but um, I think you're providing a really wonderful resource to folks all over the country or all over the world that can tune in. So yeah. that's hats off to you for doing that during this thank incredible you. time. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to be here with you and talk Likewise. about it. Likewise. Thanks.